And I'm not ashamed to say That's why I cry Cause no amount of time will make Time with you a mistake Even if the world don't think that's right and I will never understand how the little life here in my hands should seem like less than mine. So if you see tears in my eyes, you don't have to ask me why, why I cry. That's why. Thank you, church. I appreciate that. Thank you, Candy. Before we get started, I would ask if all the moms would please stand for just a moment. All moms. All right, y'all take a look around who all the mom, moms are. Now, I want you to do what Proverbs 31, the rest of y'all, I want you to rise, everybody else to stand up. And I want you to look toward those moms and I want you to repeat this after me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we call you blessed. We call you blessed. Amen. All right, you may all sit down. <clears throat> and you are. You are blessed. One time I, I asked my mom when I first started studying the Word of God, and I was reading in all those rules and laws back in Leviticus and all of those other Old Testament books, and man, it looked like that God's rules were stricter on the women than they were on the men. And my mother really knew the word big time. And so I asked her, I said, why was God stricter, particularly on the consequences of sin? It looked like, at least to me, more on the women than on the men. I said, did he think less of them? She said, on the contrary, he held the women in higher regard she said, she said, because the women are the hub of the family wheel. They hold it together. And she said, when mama goes bad, they all go down the tubes. <laughs> as 30 some years as a pastor and a former law enforcement officer, she was right. I've seen it all. My mother always told me the old phrase, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Don't ever think that motherhood is anything less than the highest position that anybody could hold in this world. Because literally the hand that rocks the cradle does rule the world. What power a mother has, even moms, don't realize how much power they have sometimes. Proverbs 31 and verse 10 said that who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Why above rubies? Why is she so valuable? Why did the writer here say that about a virtuous woman? Well, a godly woman is the moral compass of her children. My mother always said, oh yeah, your daddy's the head of the home, but I'm the neck that turns it. 
Daddy never said a word about that when she spoke up. But they are the moral compass. Moms have the hard job of gently but firmly directing the children with love. Because when all else fails, it's wait till your daddy gets home. Because he ain't going to do it gently. I can tell you that right now. I always tried to go with what mama said before it got to daddy. A godly mom lives in the attitude of great sacrifice. They always are thinking of their children more than they do themselves, big time, a godly mother. My mother told me one time, and there was a story about this child was in the classroom, and the teacher asked the little boy a math question and said, to say, say, for instance, your mom has six apples, and if she divides them between you, how many do each of you get? The little boy said, Mama gets one and I get five. The teacher said, you don't know your math. The little boy said, you don't know my mama. <laughs> and the thing that I've never been able to understand because I'm a man and I'm not a mom is that moms always look at their children as if they're still little. Yeah. <laughs> Donna, they're 35 years old, get over it. <laughs> oh no, that's, that's, they're my children. They're my children too, but they're grown. They make twice of what I make. They can take care of it. No, they can't. <laughs> At any time, any of, my five have a problem, they can call her. And I'll be listening and go, what'd they say, what'd they say? She said, you just hang on here, let me finish this. Because they always go to her first. It's not that I'm a bad dad, it's that I cut right to the chase and say, all right, let's deal with this now, this is what we're gonna do. But Donna has a different idea. She runs Fellowship Christian Academy, which is an online school from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. And she can grade papers from her phone. And she can look online what the students are doing. And she worries over them night and day. I see her up in the middle of the night with that thing, looking at it and going, so-and-so, oh, they need to retake that test. I said, Donna, let it go. Go to bed. But I might as well talk to that wall right there because she has a mama's attitude even with her students. And the student, the number of students is growing big time. But that's the way a godly mom looks at things. It says the heart of her husband safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. That is an ancient Hebrew saying and an old English thing, meaning that he don't have to go get a second job because she blows the credit card every month. That's literally what it says. And that he completely trust in her to take care of the household. My, my dad never knew how to write a check. My mother always did it. And she would take his paycheck each week and she could stretch a buck better than that Christian children's fun on TV. Y'all have seen Sally Struthers on, I think it's on the whining channel. And she'd go, I'll give a dollar a month and they can have three meals a day in a college education. Lord, I've been trying to figure out how to do that with my five children for years and I couldn't do it. But my mother could stretch a buck better than anybody I've ever seen. She 
held on to a penny so tight one time she pinched a booger out of Lincoln's nose. <laughs> Can I say that on TV? I think we're live too, aren't we? Oh well, I said it. And my dad completely trusted in her to take care of the household. And a godly mother can be completely trusted by her husband and by her children. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. If anybody had the right to kill me in my sleep, I know that if Job's wife was married to me, she would have run screaming into the woods long ago. <laughs> I'm hard, I know I, I'm terrible. But Donna is such a wonderful, she's treated me so good for the last 39 years. My mother did with my dad as well. They were married over 60 years. And it talks about a family business that mom runs out of her house. And you know, a lot of people thought that the women of that era, all they did was sit around the house all day and that's the most ridiculous thing in the world that anybody could possibly imagine because they ran, a lot of them ran a business from the home on top of taking care of almost a dozen kids. It said she seeks wool and flax and works with her hands. She's like the merchant ships that brings her food from afar. And this is it, she rises also while it is night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens. A godly mother does that type of thing. She rarely gets a whole night's sleep if she's got kids in the house because they'll wake up and they want this or they need that. And the godly woman's priority is always for one of them because she lives in that attitude of sacrifice. Oh, I can tell you ahead of time, godly motherhood is not for the squeamish or the faint of heart. Oh, buddy, let me tell you. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hand. She plants a vineyard. She girds her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. I think of my, every time I read that verse, I think of my grandmother Cash. She was not a big woman at all, but she could outwork three or four grown men. She could carry a hundred pounds on her shoulder, on her hip for over a half a mile. She was a tough woman. I always said my daddy looks like her with a skirt on. <laughs> Try not to picture that. <laughs> but she was a tough woman. And it says here, she, per she perceives that her merchandise is good and her candle goeth not out by night. When I was growing up, my mom's candle didn't go out by night and Donna's never did either. We even had a cat 12 years ago that we rescued as a kitten. Uh, you, kids are all grown, remember. And we kept that cat in their bedroom and had to get up three or four times a night to feed that kitten with a bottle. And it was always your turn to feed the baby tonight. <laughs> Picture a cat now, a little black kitten. And, uh, and, and, and it's just really funny. And I'd see Donna when we raised our five. She'd be up all night taking care of them. I did some of it too now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not as trifling as you may think I am. <laughs> but I fed them too. But I, she was always, she never, never went to sleep hardly. She could hear the slightest whimper of a child. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. The godly mom not only looks out for hers, but she looks out for others as well. That's part of the godly mother instinct, is to look out for those that are less fortunate 
as uh, my mother when I now this really is an old story this is old most of y'all have no idea what I'm going to tell you about or what these are but when I was growing up in Monroe that was a large train station and there were a lot of hobos I don't know if anybody even knows what a hobo is anymore <laughs> that would get on get off the train and they they lived on the in the train cars and they would go through the neighborhood sometimes to see if anybody could feed them. And my mother always made a great big bag of sandwiches whenever she saw them coming down the street or through our backyard going to the street and would feed them on top of taking care of her family. And I always thought what a wonderful thing that was to learn from her to take care of those that are less fortunate. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. Every time a storm would be approaching, you know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> she would fill up both bathtubs full of water. I go, what in the world are you doing? She said, well, in case the power goes out, we'll have a supply of water here. And she would always have everything ready when a storm came. And I used to go, oh, that's so ridiculous, but go ahead. And then when the power did go off, oh, I was so glad to see that she'd gotten all that stuff ready. And she would slip in that I told you so once in a while. And she deserved that. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry or clothing of silk and purple. She gives them the very best these godly moms do. And listen to the added benefit, men, being married to a godly woman. Now this is an old Hebrew expression and I'll explain it to you. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. When you would go into a Jewish city, a lot of other cities out in the Middle East as well, the elders, the leaders, the top people of that city would be sitting in the gate because they ruled from there and they would greet people that would come in. And because he had a woman that lived in the attitude of sacrifice and stood by him and he had one that he, he knew he could trust with his life, he was able to be one of the elders of the land because of that. Because of that, she made him what he was. I will be the first one to tell you that I would not be able to do what I do if it was not for Donna. She has stood by me no matter what. I could tell, I, I used to brag on her and tell her I could come in one evening and say, we're going to Pakistan in the morning, and she'd have the luggage packed and ready without ever asking me any questions about it. It's the way she's always been with me. And I could not do it if she did not stand by my side and help me. Do, uh, uh, many of the big decisions that I have to make come from her. We spend hours alone. We go out and... And uh, like I said, we, we'll take a trip one day and all day long is what we talk about is things here. And I listen to what she has to say because the Lord gives her great insight. It said when she, it said she makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles to the merchant's strength and honor or her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. The rejoicing is coming, moms. You may not feel appreciated right now. You may look at some of your kids and go, I know now why some animals eat their young. <laughs> but you hang in there. Payday's coming. And it may not even come on this side of eternity. You may hear it when your feet hit the golden streets of heaven. I don't know. But it will be worth it in the long run. She opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. 
I always say that Donna has always been kind to everybody. If Donna was to say that you are no good, you might as well get a shovel and start digging because you're going to hell. <laughs> she has found something good in every single person that she has met. And that's the way she's made. That's the way she lives. And she keeps me straight, thank God, because I'm kind of at the other extreme. She looks well to the ways of her household, and she eateth not the bread of idleness. A godly mother does not hardly have time to even sleep. And, and Candy, with the little baby she's got, and Melanie can come up here and tell you the same thing. But it's worth it until they ask for the car keys. <laughs> but that's another story, and we'll worry about that later. Yes. You will never rest, speaking of car keys. You will be concerned over those kids, all their, when they're little and all the little problems they have, and then when they get big, they'll bring you the big problems that you can't fix, and the only thing you can do is listen to them and pray for them and say, Lord, you got to handle it now. It's out of my hands. Amen. It's true. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and I am so glad that my children have always said that about her. They look at her as an example, and she's been a good one. And I always tell my kids, if you turn out half that good, you did real well. I know I'm scoring a lot of points this morning, but it needs to be said. <laughs> it needs to be said. It's the truth. Anybody that knows Donna. I, she has no enemies. I got, I got enough of both of us. I've been walking in the mall before, and there'd be some pastor or preacher that just couldn't stand the sight of me. They'd be coming down the, through the mall, and, and they'd look at me and growl like a dog, and then go, oh, Miss Donna, how are you doing? So wonderful to see you. And I go, how did you get away with that? You were in on it with me. But that's the truth. People that cannot stand me love her. So that's all right. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Give your wife flowers on this side of the grave. If they're a godly woman, praise them for it. It's a rare thing today, folks. Look around. Lord have mercy. Look at what's going on in this world. If you've got a godly mother, you ought to get on your knees and thank God for her, and you need to let her know you appreciate her. Mine got the last word in with me. She always did. She loved to argue with me, and she always would like to get that last word, and the last word she got in with me is, you're going to preach my funeral. She knew she was dying, and I went, Mama, come on, that's terrible. I got preachers in the church here, and other people can do it. She said, oh, no, uh-uh, you know me. Nobody knows me better than you do. You're going to do my funeral. That was the toughest thing I've ever done in my nearly 40 years of ministry, but I did. Mama got the last word in on that one. Many daughters have done virtuously. But you, godly woman, excel them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. For the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You have a godly wife. You're going to find that the longer you are married to her, the more beautiful she looks to you. God designed it that way. And give her praise. A woman that fears the Lord. I was raised by one. I thank God for that. Because boy was I rowdy. Oh my goodness. 
And there's some of you that have been hanging around my kids lately and they've told you all of the dirt on me and so you know I was, <laughs> Heather. <laughs> but I'm glad I had a godly mother that could see through my foolishness and my ignorance and see what I could become and she did her best. Let me explain something that my mother did that I thought was really strange, but in the long run I found out it showed great wisdom. When I was first called to preach, long decades ago, I told my mother that. And all she said was, uh -huh, well, that, that's nice, son. Never said another word. And all of those years that I studied and tried to get involved in ministry, she never gave me any encouragement. And I thought, that's mighty odd for my mother. She never really did that until the Sunday night that I got ordained at a little mission church up in Buena Vista. Her and my dad were there. And as soon as the ordination service was done, she comes up to me and she said, son, we are so proud of you. And we want you to know we're 100% behind you. And I said, why didn't you say anything to me all these years? And she said, because the world has enough mama called preachers. And I wanted to see if you had what it took against all the opposition that goes against you to see if you're truly called to God and you proved it to me. And now I'm behind you. She did that. Finally, give, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. We praise the godly women today. Any godly woman, you don't have to be a mom. If you love the Lord, we praise you today. We give you praise. But a godly mom has so much that she has to deal with. We need to pray for them because we got a lot of grandmas today that are taking care of children in their old age. And that's really, really tough. I see Donna will babysit sometimes and I'll go, oh, how do you get the energy to do that? But they do. Praise the godly woman today, the godly wife, the godly mother, because you are indeed rarer than any ruby or any diamond, and we appreciate it and so very much and thank God for you. Let's stand for the invitation. If you got something you want to do on your heart this morning, you want to thank your mom, you want to come and praise God, maybe your mom's in heaven. You still need to thank God for her. Let them know. Maybe you've come in here today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. Like it was said earlier, the greatest gift you could give your godly mom would be to accept Christ because she doubtless prayed for you for a long time that you would come to know Jesus. Even if she's in heaven, she'll know about it. Give your life to Christ and see what being godly is all about. You'll find that out. Maybe you have something else on your mind this morning. Doesn't matter what it is. Would you make your way down the aisle and let God take care of that situation that you have today? Whatever's on your heart. Maybe it's something needs to be said. Maybe you just need to come and pray and talk to the Lord. Would you come? There is coming a day.